Good morning and welcome to the second installment of my Office Hours series. Today's question comes from Avi who writes, how does one engage with people to get them interested in your art? I don't feel the appeal in social media. Oh boy, me too. Yet in my line of work, one must garner interest. Oh, so I'm sure like almost everyone watching this has asked themselves some version of this question um, on a near daily basis. Um, and so I think the, the first thing for us to, to remember and to remember every day for our own mental and emotional well-being as artists is to remember that virtually all artists are underappreciated artists. Uh, Avi and I and everyone else, uh, almost everyone else I know, you know, except for maybe two or three authors I know, are underappreciated artists. And it is what it is. Um, yes, there are certain things that we can do to increase our visibility, to get our work out there more effectively. There are certain things that we can do. And I'm going to go over that in a little bit um, because these are things that I am still working on. Let me emphasize that I have not figured this out, um, but I, th I have some questions that I'm going to ask. I'm asking myself. I'm going to ask Avi. And I'm going to ask everyone else watching this video who f who who finds this question very relevant in their own lives and in their own artistic practice. Some questions that will be more productive then how do I get more people interested? How do I get a bigger audience, a bigger following? Um, because, you know, we know that this is, this is an expression of the ego, but the, the great thing is, is, is to realize that underneath that hunger for, for fame, for notoriety, for recognition, what we really want underneath is connection. We want to feel seen, we want to feel valued, we want to feel appreciated, and we want to feel connected to within a creative community and within the wider world. So focusing on the connection and you know making your making yourself how can you validate your yourself? How can you make yourself feel seen iris, you know, regardless of how your work is received that will be that will be helpful to focus on that instead of you know looking at someone who has the career that you think you want and saying why don't i have that that's not going to get you anywhere by fixating on that question so i have a list of a list of more productive questions that i want to ask each and every one of us so questions how can you grow to feel okay, if not serene, with not being, not being at the level that you, have, that you have dreamt of being at in terms of audience following reach, you know, influence, et cetera. You know, you may have been dreaming of this since you were a small child. Um, how can you be okay with not being where you want to be right now? Because that is a daily practice that is going to improve your mental health, your emotional well being, and that is foundational, right? So, oh, and I, oh, when we were talking about most artists being underappreciated artists, the thing that I wanted to to emphasize is that most artists do not have an audience that is proportionate to their talent. I think that's another another really important thing to keep in mind. So which, you know, ties back into the question that I just asked, how can you feel okay if not serene? Serene is the ideal with being where you're at right now. So, second question how can you document your joy? Okay, so this is a multi-part multi, multi -part question. How can you document your joy, continue to refine your artistic vision over time, 
and how can you add value to a stranger's day? And by value, I mean it can it can be inspiration. It can be anything that you know just brings this mm, of you know even just for a moment a feeling of joy because they're they've heard your music and they feel inspired and heartened and their mood is better because they've listened to your track. How can you add value to a stranger's life on a consistent basis as well? Um, because this is something that I have struggled with. Well, struggled. Okay. I'm going to flag that word choice. I have been really inconsistent with putting myself out there. Um, so this, you know, as you can see, this is my attempt at being more consistent because, you know, it's not enough. I, I uh, of course I had to break, break this book out here because this is such a life without envy themed question that I'm answering this week. It's not enough to publish this book and hope that the right people find it. It helps a lot to keep showing up on a consistent basis. So this is a question that I am also asking myself. Um, how, can I, how can I be consistent about adding value to the lives of my friends, colleagues, and strangers, future readers? Um, so how can you tweak what you do or how you are documenting what you do documenting your joy and experiment on social media. So again, this is what I'm doing right now. Um, this is an experiment. I'm feeling good about how it's going so far because, uh, you know, I'm, at, I'm getting really good quality questions, which helps. Um, so to experiment and to have fun with it because people who are find, stumbling upon your work online, they will know that you know if you are doing this out of a, a sense of I should be showing up online to develop a following if that is your primary motivation people see through that right they they see that you you know and, and then in my line of work it's like buy my book buy my book buy my book that's not it's not gonna work um, you know if you're going through the motions uh, you're not interested in other people and uh, you know that's not fun. it's no fun. You're not having fun doing that, um, and people can see right through that. So um, please yourself, um, but also be useful. So um, oh, this is a big one. Are you playing your heart out, or writing your heart out, or you know painting your heart out, whatever it is, for the people who are showing up for you right now? This is so important to be grateful. Not just, not just I should feel grateful for the people who are showing up, um, and right now it's virtually showing up, right? Because there are no live gigs. Well, I think there may be some live gigs, but um, smart people are not going to those live gigs. So people, people who value their lives are not going to those gigs. Um, are you allowing yourself to feel an exuberant sense of gratitude for these people who are showing up? Can you focus on delivering to those people, delivering value and inspiration on a consistent basis to those people instead of this phantom, you know, future would be audience, which is, you know, quite frankly, you know, you're living your life in terms of deficits if you are seeing it that way. Um, I have a, I have a video that uh, was inspired by a conversation I had with Michael Harron uh, a while ago. Um, about this this feeling again we've all felt this no one cares about my work no one is interested and you know what that's that's not number one that's not true and number two it's so disrespectful to all of the people who have shown up for you since day one because no matter how underappreciated any of us may be we have the, that core group of wonderful, wonderful people who have shown up for us since day one. So shout out to all you lovely people. Um, I am so grateful for you. You are why I'm doing this. And so that's a really important question to, to keep at the forefront. Like this is probably the most important question um, on this list. Are you playing your heart out, writing your heart out, painting your heart out? for the people who are showing up for you right now. 
And then the last question is, and this is the other most important question, to what extent are you showing up for and supporting your fellow artists? Who, you know, as I said, all of your fellow artists are also underappreciated artists. And you have to be a good fan, be a good member of a community in order to develop a community around your own work. Because, you know, as I was saying with it, you know, by my, all the tweets, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book. The people who do that are not taking an interest in anyone else's work. And so why should I be interested in your work if, you know, you're not reading anybody else's books, not promoting anybody else's books, you're not interested in anybody else's work? I'm not interested in you. Um, so, and this, this again is something that I need to work on and, and be consistent about is sharing the books that I'm reading and promoting those authors and also, you know, focusing on books that aren't, on, you know, aren't on the New York Times bestseller list, aren't books that everyone else is already reading. I want to focus on those underappreciated authors, right? So I hope that this has been helpful. I am happy to go deeper uh, in, a, in a future episode on any of the points that I've made here. If you have any questions of your own that you'd like me to answer on a future Friday, uh, you can just leave a comment underneath this video. You can send me a DM, email me, uh, cometparty at gmail.com or camille at cometparty.com and I will be delighted to answer any question that you may have about create creativity, creative well-being, ego management, or any other topic. So I hope you all have a lovely Friday and I will see you next week. How do I end this thing? Oh, hey everyone. I totally was not paying attention. Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this now. <laughs> Thanks for watching.